Hello and blessings. Welcome. A calling and an opening to our circle of healing today. Uh, there is lots of amazing sharing and information going through the group. So far it's beautiful to see all the offerings that are available to everybody and we hope to see everybody taking part and asking questions and discussing your experiences of the videos that you're experiencing. Um, I've been <laughs> mentioning and intending to do this video for some days already and it's taken me some time to sort of clarify and format how I would like to bring this offering forward. So I also wrote a caption above the video about the five categories of purification that I'm going to talk about, um, which will include either stages or different types of cleansing and purifications that uh, one can work with at different levels in their lives as you align with different teachers and different opportunities and information that you can integrate into your daily life and practice. Um, so I'll discuss that after uh, I just share a little bit of my current daily purification practice, which has mostly been mantra work lately, um, and also yoga, but my main sadhana or daily practice of devotion, which I've been finding purifying and supportive for my mind, has been mantra and sacred song lately along with breath work and visualization. And truly in almost every spiritual practice, everything originates with the breath and everything originates with our connection to the elements of our bodies and our environments, the elements of the earth, of great spirit, and a connection to the knowledge and wisdom of the genetics or the body and our ancestors. So a lot of these practices are, are modernized in our current society, but they root in a deep connection to spirit and to our ancestry uh, as far as what is useful to assist in adapting our bodies to a world that is ever-changing and introducing uh, more and more toxins into our systems through our, our food systems and through our media systems and uh, through our water systems and through the systems of industry that plague the environment and are polluting our breath and these cleansing practices that have been discovered throughout time immemorial including just the simple aspects themselves of prayer, meditation, and song have been held as some of the most constant and um, I would say probably best held sacred healing purification practices of humanity and perhaps of beyond humanity, meditation, breath work, and song. So connecting in awareness to the universe and the self, connecting in awareness to the breath and the fact that breath is prana, breath is energy, and using the power, working with the power of vibration and the voice to bring intentional healing to the self and the world or the environment. So that's what I'll be starting with today, as everybody is probably used to, I'm generally singing. Uh, so I'll go through a few songs that are, a uh, few mantras and songs that are to assist in purification practices and to give us um, some supportive energies of connecting to our elemental nature <coughs> to sort of initiate the practices of cleansing energy uh, through the voice that can come through connecting to the sacred sounds of mantras and medicine music. And so we'll begin with visualization and breathing, which is a meditation. And then I'll share some songs and then I'll go on to, in the best organized way possible, discuss some purification practices you can carry into your winter and into your new year and start to integrate in stages into your life. So breathing deeply 
in through your nose and out through the mouth. A few cleansing inhales, envisioning golden light and rainbow light. And as you sigh, releasing any toxins, any apana, any waste in the body. Energizing the cells with your intentions and with your breath. Clearing the body, mind, and spirit with your breath and your awareness. And as you breathe, just finding a deep, slow, even breath and asking yourself, what are some things in my life, in my mind, in my body that make me feel heavy or dense or tired? How are these habits, attachments affecting me? And breathe with that. Feel into the body. Maybe there's tension or awareness of accumulated or crystallized toxins in the body. Breathe into these spaces of cold or heat or tension or pain. And see your breath moving into those spaces and ask yourself, what is the root of my attachment to my habits? And exploring this question of what are some things, actions, feelings, or thoughts in my life that are keeping me dense or heavy or holding me back? And in contrast to this or to assist in the polarization and the bridging of the hemispheres of the mind, asking yourself, what are some things, some thoughts, some techniques, some feelings, emotions, actions that I can take in my life that make me feel lighter, brighter, inspired, and more aligned with my true nature? So I'll talk about these questions a little bit more after some mantra meditation and ask yourself what some what your intention for purification can be. What are some things that maybe are making you heavy that you can release from your life or work towards releasing? And what are some things in your life that assist you to feel lighter and more aligned with yourself that you can integrate into your life or begin integrating into your life. And for this moment, just focusing on your breath, Seeing yourself grounded into the earth, connected to your highest and brightest self. Invite your own creator and your higher power, your own divinity, into your space to surround you in protection and healing. Allowing your breath and the sound to be a tool for purification at the foundation of your being. Knowing you can always return to the sound of your voice, to meditation, to breath and visualization, to clear the body, mind, and spirit, and to align with the highest and brightest self. I've been sharing this mantra a lot lately, the Gayatri mantra has many aspects and multi-dimensional me meanings and I shared an article about it the other day that is available on the page. Among its many powers, it is a calling to the Divine Mother and the light of the dawning sun to bring protection and purification throughout our daily practice.
you're gonna sh So we're calling to the elements in our bodies, to Ganesh to break our obstacles away, to Shiva to help us to release our illusions and ego, which uh, help us to release our habits and samskara, or deeply ingrained karmic conditioning, uh, to assist us in setting intentions and integrating cleansing processes into our lives. These beings can be very helpful and these energies of sacred sound and mantra can be very useful. So that's what I wanted to start with, to offer something that everybody can do, even just by listening to purify your mind and body. And when you set your intentions to listen with the awareness of what you are feeling, what is going on in your body, what's taking place within you and around you, and you send your breath, your intentions, and the sound, allowing the sound to move through you and into your space, clearing your space of anything that is no longer serving you or removing the dukkha or heavy or bad space and increasing the sukha or effortless or easeful space in your body, mind, and spirit and your space wherever you are, whether it's your home, your room, uh, your office, your car, the forest, wherever you and are listening from to listen to sacred music, whether that's the music I play and offer in my prayers or any other sacred sound or music that feels calming to your nervous system to uh, let that wash over you in your purification intentions and let that be a basic foundation for any um, <clears throat> practice that you wish to integrate into your life, knowing that you can always come back to your breath, knowing you can always come back to meditation, you can always come back to um, <laughs> visualization if you lose yourself in your intentions or greater goals of purifications and cleansings, which, men, which most people do go through sort of waves and ups and downs when they decide to take on purification practices. So what I've done is thought over in my life some of the practices that I've integrated over time and worked with uh, in sort of stages to acclimatize uh, the body to purification before doing deeply committed disciplined purification practices. So I've come up with a few sort of categories that then include some basic um, tips on ways you can integrate purifi pardon me, purification into your daily life and um, some suggested ways of purification of the body that also assist in purification of the spirit and the energy body. And um, these are all things that I have done myself, things that have been part of transformation in my life, things that have changed, things that have fallen away, things that have come back, things that I also, in organizing this video, am also hoping that this will also uh, be a, an inspiration for me to pick something again <laughs> and stick with it. Um, but mostly, I, like I said, I have been working with mantra as my main practice of purification. Mantra, breathwork, meditation, and visualization, which are always there for you, and prayer, which is always there for you. And throughout all, all cultures um, of the past, ancient cultures, any, many forms or any different form of these various different uh, types of connection to spirit, whether it was through playing a drum, or things like the singing bowl, or I'm working with guitar a lot, or simply just the voice reciting a mantra over and over again, or taking the time to focus on a flower or a candle within the mind's eye, or even looking directly and focusing on one object for an amount of time can be a purification for the mind. And in my personal opinion, to start with purification of the mind and the spirit, is what is important to assist one in um, taking on a releasing of a habit or a cleansing and purification practice of any kind um, or say a committed challenge to a daily spiritual practice uh, is to start with basic deep slow breathing and meditation in meditation to simply calm the nervous system 
it with the intention of self-care and calming the nervous system. And if you feel drawn to working with various techniques like sound or frequency or yoga or kundalini or mantra, then let your intuition and your heart guide you into that with your foundation being your breath and call and the intention to calm the nervous system through slow, deep, balanced, even breathing. And this is something, an easy thing that pretty much everybody can do, can access, taking the time to slow down, stop, close the eyes, breathe deeply, evenly, balanced, calming the nervous system. So let that be sort of your safety net when you set intentions and goals for deeper forms of purification. Okay, so now I will talk about these <laughs> categories that I've come up with. It's a little jumbled. I'm not the most organized person as, as any of you that know me at this point are aware of, but I've done my, <laughs> my best here, so I'm just gonna blabber for a while and then we'll close with uh, another mantra meditation. And you can feel free throughout while I'm talking to comment and ask questions if you're tuning in live or if you watch this later, feel free to comment and ask questions in the comments and I will get to them as uh, best as I can. Okay, so first category that I came up with is lifestyle habit shift. So this is something, again, that, it, that can be accessible to everyone, anywhere and um, with various different access to whatever is around you in your, in your food, in your home already, you can even start to make changes. And uh, also it may take some time to shift the way you do your grocery shopping, but this is sort of based on the concept of uh, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food or vice versa, whichever way it goes. And um, starting with something basic that any that each individual can do, going back again to that those questions that I was posing before the mantras, um, which included what are some things in my life that make me feel heavy or tired or or any or in any way unwell, and what are some things in my life that make me feel light and brighter and more aligned with my true self. So in contemplating those questions and then perhaps even looking in your fridge, looking in your pantry, uh, looking at your daily routines and daily habits, you can immediately start to make small shifts or big shifts depending on what you feel ready for. So I've just kind of broken it down into what I um, did previously in my life to step away from some to step away from habits that were holding me back, especially as a teenager, including um, releasing chemical drugs and releasing stimulants and sugar and uh, also releasing cigarettes, um, was to actually start with basically just cutting out processed foods of any kind, processed foods, fast foods, restaurants, and cutting, just cutting it out, just saying that you're done with that and starting with just going to deciding I'm going to make everything myself, basic homemade food, um, as whole food as possible, and considering what are the healthiest things that make you feel lighter when you prepare them at home. Then the second step to that is to consider going organic with your homemade foods. And this is a basic um, cleanse that anybody can start to work with to purify the body that doesn't require you to necessarily change your um, chosen, what would we call it, dietary category such as omnivore, <laughs> um, vegetarian, vegan. You can remain an omnivore, but go to homemade, organic, homemade, uh, cut out the process, cut out the restaurants, cut out the packaged foods, go to homemade. Then maybe you can go to homemade and organic, and switching to organic foods has many, many benefits that mostly relate to inflammation and keeping the organs healthier, especially because the the release and removal of a large percentage of the harmful pesticides comes along with eating organic food. So the body does, whether you change from, whether you take out meat or dairy or not, 
when you switch to organic of everything you eat, you will notice um, sometimes changes in the digestion, perhaps even uh, rashes or breakouts um, to release and get out the chemicals that are in your body. And there are many things you can do to also assist that process, like adding green juices and green smoothies to your day that include cilantro and parsley, which are both heavy metal detoxifiers and kidney and liver cleansers, um, <clears throat> as well as simple things like drinking lemon water every day or drinking tea, herbal teas every day that are non-caffeinated. Uh, or also even cutting down on coffee and um, other caffeinated drinks or stimulants, sugars. And then over time, considering perhaps if you feel like you've reached a plateau of cleansing, maybe you have some goals you want to reach with your body, maybe you're focusing more on how you feel if physically on inflammation or chronic pain, then considering switching to vegetarian and slowly cutting out meat, maybe doing a vegetarian day once a week, maybe then over time you add to it. So in doing this myself, the main benefits I've noticed from going organic first was definitely a release and change of the way my skin um, looked and felt and the way my body reacted to physical movement um, specifically as just less inflammation less pain less pain overall in the body and switching to vegetarian definitely changed uh, major changes in my digestive system you definitely go through a, more of a digestive flush when you switch to vegetarian and cut out meat proteins because the enzymes in the body do change and um, <clears throat> then maybe after acclimatizing for some time these are all just sort of basic ideas that you can start with and then see how they feel for you and take it all in steps take it as it goes with you uh, because to push yourself too hard and to become stressed as a result of cleansing or what many do which is the diet cycle just doesn't actually work it's not sustainable so to make daily changes subtle daily changes until you feel you can go deeper and you're more used to what you're cooking and what you're eating and what you're buying then perhaps considering going vegan by now perhaps you've been organic homemade vegetarian for some time then considering going vegan for some time and to if you feel like your body just really isn't flushing and you're not cleansing as much as you thought you would then take some time going totally organic raw vegan and you can research each of these individually for ideas and for recipes and for more uh, information I'm not gonna go into too much of like how to do this each individual thing I'm just sharing um, what I have done, what I have tried, what has helped me, and some of the benefits that I've received from them. So switching to, ve in changing to vegetarian and vegan, for me that was quite a long process and now I'm not um, really anything and I'm not um, interested in the, the labeling, it's more of the lifestyle shifting and being aware that all of these different lifestyles offer tools for spiritual, physical, and mental purification. So a parallel I see in when one starts to change to a vegetarian and or vegan diet and or raw vegan diet is actually first on the emotional level um, and mental level where the hormones of the body start to reset and you become more literally more compassionate and actually feeling in a bliss state or a high state um, especially after the say first month of mega mega cleansing that goes along with that so i would recommend if you're considering if you are if you do eat meat regularly and you want to consider switching to vegetarian or vegan you look up some other cleansing and detoxification practices or uh, processes that help you with cleansing the digestion and keeping everything flowing as you do that um, because it can be the detoxification can be very um, heavy some of the days especially after a first week of cutting out meat and dairy especially dairy has uh, quite a withdrawal 
effect but um after you get through it you feel much lighter you feel much heavier or sorry <laughs> that was uh, you feel much lighter and much healthier and uh, you also feel mentally i would say more uh the mind becomes more cognitive i definitely noticed as well as it's easier to tune into your purpose truthfully um, and vegetarianism is across many cultures that has shown that it shows up in in religious uh, spaces as well as um, what would you say dharma based uh, teachings and practices like yoga but also in Hinduism and Sikhism there's there is a lot of um, upliftment or encouragement to be vegetarian and that is part of staying in a in a balanced state with harming as little as possible and then a lot of ancient teachings do also talk about veganism to remove karma uh, from the light from the current life cycle and to remove the cycle of harm to other living beings and so that change i think is something that i've seen in myself and in people in general and carries forward even if I change my diet and sometimes personally I've now learned that after I, I would say a, two pretty strong years of totally vegan with a mixture of these other cleanses that I'll mention shortly um, <clears throat> that the compassion and the, the awareness and the respect and prayer for my food in general is more of the most constant thing that came from that shift and uh, but I found for myself and my own personal body just in tuning in that last year especially I needed to integrate a lot of fish and um, so now I'm eating seafood occasionally and then plant-based most of the rest of the time okay so in just mentioning these these are things that you can even do for a day at a time and see the basic difference that it gives you which may not be much but it is subtle and and then look at doing a few days a week and then look at going for a full week either full week organic full week vegetarian full week vegan full week raw vegan and or do it in succession because the as you do the the changes slowly the body gets more prepared for when you want to do a raw vegan cleanse um or even switch to raw vegan as a lifestyle uh, which when you do does come with again another very powerful cleansing and detox uh, even if you've already been eating vegan especially if you're not eating all homemade and organic vegan because now we have so many so many options that there's many meat substitutes and a lot of packaged and processed vegan foods that are helping to transition a lot of people but are not necessarily the healthiest and sustainable so when you go to raw vegan, you're really just focused on the actual raw fruits and vegetables, as well as dehydrated um, things, smoothies and juices also. And uh, this does make another big shift in the digestion and cleanses the, in, the inflammation out of the body. Um, I found when I've been raw vegan for some time or also challenged myself to prolonged raw vegan cleanses which I'll talk about next uh, with juice cleansing and smoothie cleansing that um, I actually get fairly like uh, I don't even know how to describe it transcendental at different points usually after two weeks or so I need to start eating some cooked food because I find that I'm a little too ungrounded and perhaps that's my own uh, work that I would need to rebalance how I'm doing it I fi I'm finding that with vegan eating as well that there is probably there were probably some elements of balance that I was missing previously that left my body feeling like I needed to integrate seafood again and so there's a lot of research you can do to help support you when you do these changes and uh, there's thousands and thousands of resources available for why to do these do these lifestyle shifts with your eating and how this can help you along in a spiritual practice is the more mindful you become of what you're purchasing and what you're consuming and why you're consuming it, as well as the more mindful you become of how you're respecting um, the earth and your body, the more clear, literally, the more clear your channel or <laughs> brain, if you want to look at the mind, the more clear your mind becomes 
And as a result of that, the more clear your overall energy body and physiological system uh, ends up being to receive essentially more information, more light, and to know your inner purpose and direction more clearly uh, because you start to cut away these sort of harmful karmas that come from unaware consumption. And yeah, okay, so also in, within that, you can also work into other things such as slowly starting to cut out like within raw veganism, if you get to that point in your life, it also recommends cutting out things like coffee and of course you wouldn't have white sugar and all kinds of different things that would lead you to also changing um, a lot of uh, the sort of basic societal normal daily habits that we have in our world of a lot of stimulants and sugars and carbohydrates that are completely removed because there's no cooked grain. So like things like bread and uh, crackers or anything fried and stuff like that is all out with raw vegan unless you make it dehydrated. So that leads you to sort of a deeper rabbit hole, so to speak, of, ma of major cleansing that cuts out of uh, or eliminates a lot of different things from your life. In, uh, in homemade organic, you don't necessarily have to eliminate anything, you just replace. Uh, within vegetarian, of course, you're eliminating meat and ideally you're do working with organic vegetarian food if it's accessible to you. Um, <clears throat> with vegan, it's kind of confusing now because you are eliminating a lot of things, but now there's pretty much a substitute for everything. So there's a necessity for discernment, I would say, in the amount of processed vegan food you eat. So my uh, one of my greatest recommendations for um, the one of the best things to be able to actually integrate into every person's life is homemade organic vegan food once or twice a week. <laughs> and that can help you stay lighter, brighter, healthier, less inflamed for yourself and your whole family. And then in that basic first step, it helps you to sort of start to cut out other things. So just a little bit of where this comes from for me is that I, um, as a teenager, found myself very depressed, fell into um, quite a strong couple of years of addiction to alcohol and chemical drugs and hit this wall where I realized I needed to quit doing that because some friends in my life were suffering pretty deeply from their abuses of their bodies and uh, so through tuning in to my being with the assistance of psychedelic mushrooms, I learned that I needed to make this first shift to homemade food and slowly cutting out meat. Then secondly, did a vegetarian cleanse. And it wasn't later until I started working with vegan and raw vegan food um, but in that, it helped me to change my addictive patterns um, when I was 17 and 16 or 17. And um, yeah, so to start making those basic shifts and adding the mindfulness to what you're eating every day and how you're preparing it and where it comes from and what it means to you and why um, helps you to look at all of the other little wastes of energy that we have in our lives or all of the other little uh, habitual attachments that we have in our lives so to consider a day or two days then moving on to a week then maybe to a month maybe two maybe three months and just monitoring yourself and seeing how you feel throughout each of these subtle shifts until your body feels ready to go deeper into the next stage okay so now I'm going to move on to talk about juice and smoothie cleansing which I've done a lot of and which is kind of a funny thing because you can get in a ju in a in a tox detox cycle with juicing and smoothie cleansing I think a lot of people in the new age spiritual community get into this tox detox cycle um, where a lot of psychedelic partying with acid and stuff is all okay for burning man and then after you do a juice cleanse or some plant medicine to um, clean it out and then it's all clear but in my opinion that's not really <laughs> how it works and it's really not sustainable for anybody and so this is another thing that is good to consider where are you at 
how much willpower do you truly have to work with only having juice or only having smoothies for a whole day or more than a day. And um, it's again something that I recommend working with in, in succession and or stages. So thinking at first, if you're somebody who's working on switching to homemade and organic food and you're not, um, and you haven't done much, clen much cleansing for a full day, then uh, doing a one day smoothie cleanse is kind of an easy everybody thing that you can do. Or if you don't have a blender, if you, that happens to be, then you can do a one day eat just fruit, just eating fruit and, and maybe some like greens like kale leaves or lettuce leaves or um, celery or something like that. And, uh, but if you can make smoothies for yourself, then just making three or four smoothies throughout the day as you're hungry, whatever your favorite mixture of fruits is. But the important thing about the smoothie cleanse is that you have uh, something that gives you amino acids in it, um, which I personally have done with um, hemp and chia seed in fairly large amounts. So like a couple of tablespoons of hemp seed and a couple uh, and a tablespoon of chia seed per smoothie is what I've done previously for a full day smoothie cleanse and then that way you don't you don't feel like you're hungry and you're you get quite a, a cleansing of the lower body of course and um, you feel lighter and you feel lighter the next day and hungry but not as like not as much of a strong detox where maybe you get headaches and and stuff like that depending on where you're coming from in your in your diet in the first place uh, but a one-day smoothie cleanse can make a, a sort of jump difference and can help you if you're thinking of switching from one of the first levels I mentioned. Like if you're thinking of going from eating meat three or four times a week to uh, cutting it out entirely and going vegetarian, then doing a one-day smoothie cleanse before you do that, then switching vegetarian can also help with that change. And of course, this is flowing in everybody's lives and we all go back and forth through our habits and um social conditioning and etc cetera, etc cetera, pulls us in and back to different things but i can definitely say that juicing and smoothie cleansing are one of the things that do help to break this social conditioning barrier that says what to eat and drink because you kind of have this like protection of i'm on a juice <laughs> cleanse right now so uh but it also requires much training in your mind so that's again why I've recommended to make your foundation of cleansing, breath work and meditation, maybe mantra, maybe prayer, so that you are calling in that spirit, calling in that willpower of the creator, of the creation of your soul, of your true self, intentionally aligning with your true self to assist you through these processes. Okay, and then um, one day juice is a very different experience than a smoothie cleanse you're much more hungry you do have more detox now these are both uh when i say one day smoothie one day juice the encouragement is to also cut out coffee and sugar um of any kind for your whole day so you're not putting like um fake juices or sugars or sweeteners in your smoothie it's also whole just whole foods and when i say one day juice it's not um like a box of orange juice it's like make juice or find a, a local juice cleanse you can get that is cold organic fresh pressed cold pressed organic juice um <clears throat> and uh one day cleanse with juice is very flushing for your digestive system uh, depending on how your diet is again that's where you can also monitor these stages if you don't feel like you get lighter after one, a one day cleanse then I would recommend doing three days, working into three days and noticing how you feel after three days. If after three days you feel really gross and really yucky, I'd recommend going for a week and getting through the detox barrier or the detox wall and then getting through a full week and you'll see that after a few more days, after hitting that really sort of tired point, you um, get uplifted and lighter and your body feels better. So <clears throat> again, willpower meditation helps. Kundalini yoga is very helpful in cleansing practices, which I'll talk about a little bit next as well. 
And then I'm just going to share, oh yeah, and uh, so a week juice cleanse, um, you definitely go through a stronger detox process, but you feel like quite high at the end of it. Two weeks juice cleanse, again, stronger detox process, and um, you feel you will lose quite a bit of weight for most people. Uh, so if you're already a thin or slight person or, or very petite, I wouldn't recommend doing two weeks of juice. Um, even three days is probably fine or even just doing a smoothie cleanse if you feel like you really need the flushing uh, of your system, but it's not for actually getting rid of accumulated body fat. So yeah, and then two weeks, I would say you feel the biggest benefit if it's if it's 14 days or longer. And then there, are, I've never done it with juice, but there are people that say 30 days and then 60 days and then 90 days make uh, huge, huge differences, changes, alkalize your entire body, can help you release any diseases, basically can get rid of cancer very various different potential benefits that you can also look into about 30 day and 30 day 60 day and 90 day um, organic juice fasting and i'll just tie that in again to raw vegan raw vegan also has some um, sort of research on what happens in the body how the body changes in these sort of successive uh, time frames and I'm just going to share about some one practice that I've done as far as smoothie and juice cleansing. I've done the day juice cleanses, three day juice cleanses, week long and two week juice cleanses. And mostly the benefits have been cleaning of the digestive, clearing of inflammation. My mind goes a bit loopy and I get really tired on any juice cleanse and um, find that once I'm done the juice cleanse and I start eating again, then uh, I can think faster and more clearly. Then um, in quite an extreme, then there's ways to go more extreme if you're getting used to cleansing later on in your journey of cleansing or if you're somebody who's already been doing different forms of cleansing and purification in your life and you feel ready to start working with more of these. Um, one thing I've done personally, which was to actually help me get through a 40-day kundalini yoga meditation challenge of doing sat kriya for 40 days 11 minutes a day and i just couldn't do it it was making me angry <laughs> i could only get through eight minutes and every time i would think eight minutes when i was done and then i'd be like okay i'm done and then it was only eight minutes and then i'd have to try and finish the three minutes and i just couldn't get through it so i decided that i needed something else i knew i could do for 40 days in order to finish this meditation <laughs> And I'd already been doing raw vegan eating for a few months at this point and decided that I could handle 40 days of just green smoothies. And so I made just green smoothies with kale, pear, apple, um, the hemp and chia seed and water and lemon, half a lemon juice every day for 40 days. And um, <clears throat> did that during my yoga teacher training some years ago and did manage to finish the kundalini yoga meditation which ultimately when i linked them together and i got through to about two weeks and or 20 days or so of the smoothies and was doing the meditation i was getting finding the 40 days of smoothies really intense and difficult at that point but then the meditation once i committed to it started kicking me through to realize i could commit to both of them and that was a big uplifting shift so there is some science behind 21 days of, of intention or 21 days of meditation, of a specific meditations that come through kundalini yoga as well as through uh, addictions therapies. Um, and then to 40 days being when you can actually not only break a habit, but you're integrating a new healthy habit depending on what it is you're doing. So that's why I chose the 40 days. Um, however, with that, around 38 or so days, I felt like I was going to fly off the earth and everything was spinning around pink and blue all the time everywhere I went and there were flashing trails and I didn't know what was happening. So um, day 41, I was done with that and I, <laughs> I ate food. But um, the changes that took place, so it was very transcendental there was a lot of emotional clearing it you do have way 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 more time um in your day 
if you only make smoothies because I was out most of the day working with clients and doing teacher training and working and um, would take three jars of smoothies with me or sometimes four. And that's just all that I had to do about food for 40 days. So it changes everything about your world because you do have to find more ways, well, not have to, but you end up finding more ways to be productive because you don't have these like four or five hours of figuring out what you're eating and preparing it um, because you can make all the smoothies in half an hour in the morning. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that was when I was going out though. If I was home, I would make them separately so they were more fresh. Anyways, that was something that I don't necessarily <laughs> recommend, but you can do three days, five days, 10 days of green smoothies, see how you feel, and you can stop these things anytime. And the important thing is that when you stop doing a cleanse, that you ease into whatever you're going to start eating and you keep it lighter and healthier. Like if you're doing smoothies for a day, maybe start your next day with like oatmeal and then have salad for lunch. Don't binge on, a, on junk food after these or else it actually defeats the purpose but also makes it harder on your currently sensitive rejuvenating organs when you're doing a cleanse. If you bash yourself right away after with a bunch of processed foods, um, it actually is harder on your organs to then process the things all at once afterwards. You have to ease back into it so that the whole system can acclimatize to whatever your next chosen dietary path is going to be. Okay, next I'm going to talk about releasing an addiction. And I've written in here also uh, a specific purification and detoxification of the body cleanse, which also gets rid of candida. Uh, which is three weeks, no sugar, no grains, no processed foods. And you can do that three weeks to three months to nine months and it completely changes your gut biome. And by releasing um, the overgrowth of candida in our bodies, it helps us to get rid of habit traps and the candida overgrowth in our bodies actually encourages us to relapse into our habits and addictions. Um, first with food, but because it um, an overgrowth of candida in the body actually has a neurotoxin that causes the feeling of depression or sadness or grief. So depending on the person and their social and emotional conditioning in their life, what habits and coping mechanisms they've created, this overgrowth of candida can lead to the amplification of one's addictions or habit patterns that lead to addictions. So if somebody is already um, prone to alcoholism and they're falling into a habit pattern of alcoholism, they're falling into an addiction, the candida will actually use the um, emotional addiction to amplify your physical addiction to other things, including foods, or especially the foods that it wants, which are carbohydrates and processed sugars and yeasts. And so there's a, there's a relation to the gut biome and the way that the brain responds to what the body consumes, which changes the way your hormones secrete and cause your emotions to play out in your world. So when you have this overgrowth, um, getting rid of an addiction is actually really difficult. So that's why I mentioned that here. So if you're thinking of releasing an addiction, I highly recommend starting with cutting out sugar and um, working on lessening caffeine if you drink coffee and maybe even cutting out caffeine if coffee is related or linked to your addiction or if you're addicted to coffee. Starting with cutting out sugar can help you in doing so and then thinking of going for three full weeks of no sugar and no grains and you can research this, um, research um, candida cleansing, candida diets, anti-parasitic diet, um, anti-candida anti diet, and you can find more information on this. I don't know about necessarily related to the neurology of addictions and habit patterns and the gut biome, not sure, but um, that's out there too somewhere. 
And so considering doing first three weeks, which is 21 days of no sugar and no grains to reformat the gut biome can help you to cut out other addictions. So if you're not ready, if you know you want to quit smoking cigarettes, for example, but you're not ready, then start with cutting out sugar and see how it changes your daily life and the things you reach for autonomously. And um, again, return to breath work and meditation. And you can also add things like drinking extra water, da 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 da. That's not really the point I'm <laughs> trying to make here because again, I'm not gonna tell you all the hows of this because there's thousands and thousands of articles about everything I'm saying right now that I've also worked through in my own life, receiving different information from different people, doing my own research and doing my own experimentation on my own physical body and then seeing how these different practices affect me and the changes that I've been able to make with them and the ways that the mind tricks you later to bring you back into things or how your relationship changes with things. So um, yes, and then looking at three months, looking at committing yourself to three months of candida cleansing, which later on does al allow you to integrate some amounts of grains, um, but still is recommended no sugar. Okay, so that's just like an introduction to releasing an addiction. My personal experience with habits and addictions is really interesting and an ever moving um, karma, dharma situation. <laughs> and I have transcended multiple addictions and I've returned to some addictions where their relationship is different and I'm more aware of how to change it from an addiction to a, um, a, a ritual. And also where there is an awareness of when the rituals in our life become habits and where the habit becomes a trap to take us into other emotional patterns that lead us into other coping mechanisms that may become addictions. So this falls into all kinds of different categories for all kinds of different people. It may be the way you speak to yourself. It may be in things you eat. It may be something you consume. Um, it, however, everybody has some kind of addiction, whether it's mental, emotional, or physical. There are all kinds of different techniques to release these, which why this one is sort of is later on the list is because the first two that we've talked about so far will help you in realizing what you are addicted to and will help you in releasing addictions in your daily life by changing the way you're eating and the way you're consuming um, for sustenance out of necessity allows you to become more aware of what is no longer necessary. Um, <clears throat> so one big thing I recommend for anybody who smokes cigarettes, if you want to quit smoking cigarettes, releasing that addiction, I recommend starting with um, rolling your own cigarettes with organic tobacco, rolling your own tobacco prayers with organic tobacco, sitting with the tobacco, respecting it as a plant medicine and a messenger to the ancestors, and um, taking the time to shift over to that, and then maybe you find that it helps you to quit. It definitely helps you to get away from the chemically laced cigarettes and it definitely helps you to lessen the amount of smoking because you're being more intentional. Um, I'm talking about smoking because that is my work in life <laughs> at this point that I'm a, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. That is one thing that I have quit, but I do smoke cannabis and tobacco um, together as prayers and am recognizing when that ritual becomes too much. And I'm at a point where I'm working on changing that relationship again and re recognizing the uh, traps of the habits of, of my brain, actually. So sometimes you just need to find something that works to take up more time. So maybe that's a project, maybe that's work. Right now I've been playing a game uh, that helps me to just keep my mind occupied and change over 
the routine. So adding other routines to shift your time from things you may be attached to or addicted to can be a soft way to start working into releasing these things. And then of course, there's all kinds of different levels that of course, if you if you're really seriously in an addiction and you happen to be listening to this right now, get get professional help. Find a, find somebody who can help you. Find a treatment center if you need to. Whatever um, you're working through, sometimes it's not it's not necessarily enough to just do it alone. So also that's part of why um, I I wanted to be here at this time um, to offer these different techniques as well as to offer the daily videos and to get others offering their videos through here is because there's a lot of people working through all of their patterns right now as the entire earth is working through um, humanity is working through our patterns and addictions and habits as a society right now becoming um, it's becoming very apparent that we require more transparency in society and i think that in that change we are kind of um, pushed back and forth into our um, comfort zones or comfort mechanisms coping mechanisms and comfort zones and that's a major part of getting rid of addictions is to step out of the comfort zone and find something you can add to your life that becomes more becomes a supportive habit and instead of a destructive habit. So um, just personally with releasing addictions, what I have released in my past are chemical drugs and cigarettes and alcohol. Um, alcohol has never made its way back in and neither do chemical drugs. Tobacco as a plant medicine has made its way back into my life after over a year of, of not smoking cigarettes, not smoking anything, um, returning to tobacco and, and cannabis as plant medicines has been a very helpful and useful tool and medicine in my life over these last um, maybe eight, nine years or so. Uh, and also is helping me to be aware of all of my destructive patterns, which even medicine can become a destructive pattern. So, um, however, when you change the destructive habit to working with a plant medicine, sometimes that can transform the nature of addiction in your body completely. And then another ally in releasing addictions, uh, again, meditation, breath work, and prayer. Prayer for me was definitely the major helper that got addictions out of my way. And then the physical cleansing that I've mentioned before this. And then another major ally is Kundalini Yoga, doing the 21 day, a 21 day Kundalini Yoga Kriya. One, the, the one that I mentioned previously, the Sat Kriya in Kundalini Yoga is one that has been studied to assist people in releasing addictions but there are others in um, kundalini yoga teachings that assist in releasing addictions and 40 days of of a kundalini yoga challenge assist in releasing addictions and adding new habits um, new healthy habits as well as you remove the old ones and then also yoga practice itself is very very powerful and helpful in releasing addictions whether it's yoga asana or just daily meditation and mindfulness meditation have all um, been shown to help people in releasing addictions. So <clears throat> if you want, if you're wanting to work on letting go of an addiction, whether it's alcohol, whether it's cigarettes, whether it's f food addiction to a specific processed food or overeating itself, um, there's I, I could go on and on and on because every person has again I'll say it, some small small or big addiction that is there, whether you recognize it or not, it might even just be a thought that you think all the time. And there's ways to change that that are more simple, such as affirmations. So just asking yourself again, what are things in my life that make me feel heavy? And then adding to that question, and why do I go back to it over and over again? <laughs> And um, am I returning to things that I know aren't good for me over and over again, autonomously or habitually, and then working on adding something supportive to your life that helps you to take more time away from the thing that is pulling you um, away from yourself. 
Okay, yep. <clears throat> For now, I think that's all I have on that one. And I think I'm going to sit with that, the number three, releasing an addiction and perhaps make its own personal little video. Okay, so now number four is disciplined spiritual practices. And I wrote down a bunch of things because I've done, th these are all things that I've experienced or I've done myself and or that I'm currently still personally committed to. And um, so, yeah, disciplined spiritual practices. Um, again, some there, these are things that actually cross multiple different cultures because every part of the world has found different um, spiritual leaders have created different traditions of deep disciplined practices that lead us into a greater understanding of ourselves, a greater understanding of the cosmos, the universe, and the integration of divine knowledge, knowledge of our bodies, knowledge for or of our communities, and the wisdom of how to live. So a lot of this comes from the plants themselves, and a lot of this comes from ceremonies to honor the spirits of everything around us in order to receive these information informations or whatever levels of information okay so <laughs> i'm just gonna go through them i guess so ceremonies is sort of a big blanket word that means any type of ceremony that one is resonating with called to that is a devoted practice to the elements of the earth to the ancestors and to healing of the self so for me that has included new moon and full moon ceremonies generally with new moon is setting intentions with full moon is for releasing emotions um, which may include candles altars and fires and or fires definitely for me always includes prayers and songs um, and then uh, healing circles um, <clears throat> then there's also different types of prayer ceremonies that may be done on different celestial alignments like solstices and equinoxes or even sometimes in between moons have special days um, or special ceremonies for those those auspicious timings celestially um, what are some other Re making prayer ties um, I find that for me playing playing music is basically always a ceremony and my yoga practice is always a ceremony. So ceremony is also something very personal, but there are people's formats that are that exist out there over time. Generally, the most powerful and the healthiest ceremonies to learn within your life and yourself are the ones you create yourself from the knowledge you've found in your own being through meditation and or through absorption of spiritual knowledge, which resonates with you and you feel that it uplifts you, creating rituals or ceremonies around that resonance can, are generally the most powerful and uplifting for your own life because you have your own um, way with it that you can deepen the ceremony that to make it more meaningful to you. Now, this may be very personal and you never share it, or you're working on something you want to share with others. Then there are others that hold space and facilitate ceremonies under many different names and um, or types of ceremonies and those ceremonies maybe you take on elements or you or you replicate it in your own life um, <clears throat> which is such like in India in Hindu culture it's actually quite traditional that the same mantras and the same formats of altars and ceremonies are done for the same deities or elemental energies or beings so many people that are devoted to say Ganesh are all doing the same sort of little things for Ganesh but maybe they maybe one person gives one type of sweet to Ganesh while another person gives coins to Ganesh but the mantras and the basic setup of the ritual are fairly similar so these are all um, sort of on the personal level ceremonies then there's the group like healing circle format of ceremonies drum circles i would say that even ecstatic dance uh would be considered a ceremony um definitely singing circles uh meditations meditation circles um even group mantra or group kirtan would be considered a ceremony and these are all purifying cleansing practices for your mind and emotional body which as we now know in even just scientifically that 
the body is mostly water and sound vibration intention and intentional thought awareness change the water around us or within us and within us and around us so <clears throat> any form of ceremony that you bring your intention into is changing the water in your body and this is going to bring some kind of healing to you so through your intentions you may you can make the healing more specific by what you ask for to your own self your higher self your creator the energies you've created for your ceremony and or to the facilitator of said ceremony or healing session so then in link to that i'm going to briefly talk about plant medicines plant medicines are very prevalent in our society this uh this day and age i want to say and um there are many many different ones including some animal medicines that are becoming very prevalent in our day and age. The first thing I'll say about plant medicines is I do not recommend them for everyone. The second thing I'll say about plant medicines is if any one of them calls to you personally, I do recommend it for you. Um, if it does not call to you, don't worry about plant medicines. Uh, there are so much more teachings that you can work with that do not necessarily need these sort of uh, master plants for you to work through your own process or journey in life. Uh, however, they can be a major accelerator and a helper, especially when we have deep-seated or deep-seated rooted issues that are physical or emotional that need to be sort of removed by the chemicals of the plant or the specific ritual associated with it. So I'm not going to go too much into the various plant medicines that there are. I'm just going to share that I spent, um, I would say I have spent now a solid um, part of my life, sort of half of my life connected to plant medicines and the understanding that the spirits uh, of the plants and the medicines we work with are plant spirits and they do communicate to us. Then there's these master plants around the world that many tribal and ancient cultures have worked with that have a specific power and intentional energy and vibration because they've come here as messengers to assist in the genetic evolution of humanity. So there are, there's a lot of study coming out right now about how um, psychedelic mushrooms, for example, can heal depression and help heal PTSD. There's so much research and we're seeing how it's become big enough in the world that um, marijuana is becoming legalized in most of the world especially medically and in a lot of the world is becoming so recreationally and um, <clears throat> the in my personal opinion also that requires a greater respect of the nature of these medicines in our world and the way they function in our world so even coffee is a plant medicine, cacao is a plant medicine, and the, these are held by ancient cultures as well. It's not just something thrown out there. It is known that cacao is a, is a sacred spirit, and it is known that coffee is a sacred spirit. So one basic way you can work with plant medicine is just to honor these in your life a little bit more to honor the herbs you use in your food for extra flavoring, to honor the supplements you take that might contain um, compounds of herbs um, and different plant, special plants and minerals that have been put together to assist in our bodies being balanced, um, honoring your water as a medicine, honoring your food as medicine. These are the sort of first steps to working with plant medicine. And I think in our world, in our society, we forget to introduce people to the basics of offerings and the basics of connecting to nature and the basics of cleansing the body um, in a lot of cases before they go deep into working with plant medicines, which actually leads a lot of people to relying on plant medicines, which is not the point of neither the medicine nor the spiritual journey. So um, be discerning if you want to work with plant medicines, of, of course, and if you already do, be very discerning and be mindful that it's still for you, you know, and it's for the plant and it's for the earth and that what resonates for you at the time is what's important. You are not obligated to um, continue consuming plant medicines for the rest of your life 
if just because it gave you a transcendental experience, there's other ways to work with these medicines. And um, this is all coming from experience of co-facilitating, of learning the medicine, co-facilitating plant medicine ceremonies, facilitating plant medicine ceremonies, and working with, the, with plant medicines on my own daily for quite some time, as well as um, depending on the medicine, <laughs> and as well as working with specific plant dietas and preparing for the plant medicines and seeing how it changes your entire being um, and also reminds us that everything is temporary and that we do need to still, no matter what we are working with, create a daily spiritual practice in order to integrate the massive amounts of downloads, teachings, and healing experiences that can come from purification ceremonies and plant medicine ceremonies. So honoring and respecting all the plants around you can also provide you a transcendental experience. And I do encourage you to do your research and be very discerning to set and setting and um, to the knowledge of people and word of mouth and listening to truth and discernment of others before you sit in a in a circle or ceremony of plant medicine work and and or before you um, do any micro dosing of any plant medicines or start integrating any plant medicine into your life make sure that it feels resonant comfortable and you've done some research on on and set your intention on how it's going to benefit you and be aware of if if you become reliant on it um, which I can only say for myself because that part, the reliance, does end up holding you back at different times. So be aware when you are reliant on plant medicines and um, lessen your consumption of them if you realize that's taking place. And then on a, just on another level of honoring the plant medicines that you may already consume daily, um, such as coffee, or you may consume many times a month, like chocolate, cacao. Um, these plant spirits can be honored by a simple prayer, by saying thank you for the nature of their, of their medicine in our world, and by honoring them as, uh, as, as an ancestral medicine or an ancestral spirit medicine. And yeah, so that's all I'm going to say on that one for now. <clears throat> and okay, so to remind, this is Disciplined Spiritual Practices. <laughs> And uh, I'm just going through some that I've experienced and how they've benefited me. Um, yeah, anyway, ceremonies and plant medicine, though, have benefited me in sort of mysterious and confusing ways. <laughs> and that's why I don't necessarily recommend them for everybody, because they may or may not take you years to sort out um, what your work with them actually is, even from one ceremony. Some people, or even from microdosing for a couple of weeks, some people take years or months, months or years, weeks, months, years to truly integrate and understand the teachings. And I know for myself, I am still integrating and, uh, and beginning even only to comprehend some of the teachings I've received from plant medicines in my life. Okay, so next is sweat lodges. Um, sweat lodges may, may or may not be accessible to you in your life. This is not, again, not something I necessarily recommend for everybody, but it is something that has impacted me multiple times very powerfully. And, um, ideally, a sweat lodge, you are working with a lineage, a person who has been trained by lineage and who has, much, who has a lot of experience in facilitating a sweat lodge. Um, generally, <clears throat> this is from a Native American or First Nations uh, Canadian or Indigenous lineage of even uh, South and Central America. There are some sweat lodge traditions in South and Central America, as well as sweat lodge or Temascal tradition throughout the Mayan culture in Mexico. And these are generally an overview of a sweat lodge is that it represents the womb of Mother Earth often in many teachings and represents a space of connection to the ancestors. So this is a more of a recommendation for you to find ways in your own life, in your own daily life, to connect to Mother Earth and to connect to your ancestors and to create a sacred environment 
around yourself that you can be in connection to those beings. So sweat lodges are done through the use of lava rocks at a sacred fire that has been prayed with, given tobacco offerings, and um, is a really big hot fire to get the lava rocks really red hot. And then they go in the center of the sweat lodge to make the sweat lodge, which is usually made of wood and covered in blankets or animal skin, to make the inside really, really hot so that you actually sweat out all your physical toxins while going through prayers and sacred songs for the healing of your mental and emotional toxins simultaneously and then praying for the village or praying for the people and praying for the earth. So the basics of that you can integrate into your own life without having an, any access to a sweat lodge are finding more ways to pray for the healing of yourself, for the earth and for the people and finding ways to sit in total seclusion and darkness if you feel called to sit in total darkness and simply pray in, for a long time discipline yourself to deeply focus and the sweat lodge itself is also forcing you to focus beyond the heat and beyond the uncomfortable nature of being sort of in a very closed dark totally dark very very hot space sometimes with many people sometimes with few um <clears throat> if you can probably at this point in our world it's a no however one day i'm sure we will all be able to connect to our ancestors and access these types of teachings again in group formats but um <clears throat> to find this type of work is not necessarily easy it's just it is very powerful so if in some way in your life you feel called and you end up aligning with um, a sweat lodge that you know is reputable that you've received from recommendations from people in your world um, then I do highly recommend it and because you can sort of go at your own level it's not necessarily totally welcome for people to leave the, the sweat lodge during the rounds but if you have to you can and it's all forgiven and it's all acceptable because um, everybody is there for their for their own ability at, especially when you first do something like that it can be um, quite a challenge so it's also encouraged to prepare yourself with uh, cleansing of your body before in different ways, but that would very much depend on where the teachings are coming from. And also in a sweat lodge, there would be drumming and singing. So the sound is another aspect. So it's a bringing together of all of the elements, a bringing together of the sound, a bringing together of the people and connecting to the fire of the sun and the fire of the earth, the core of the earth, calling in your ancestors and guides. So um, I, I'll just also briefly talk about sacred fire because it's involved in sweat lodge. A sacred fire is something maybe you would be more likely to be able to hold on your own. Um, <clears throat> and it's not, it's not necessarily something I can say that you have full permission for, but we are all great spirit. We are all here as one and we're uh, at this time we all need to learn um, how to uh, transcend our limitations and how to pray um, and manifest change and manifest hope in the earth and in the world. So sacred fires can be very purifying as well because you're sitting there with the fire focused on the sacred fire praying to the sacred fire uh, and also being warmed by the sacred fire through the body and also outside in nature so the importance of a lot of the things i've just mentioned so ceremonies plant medicine sweat lodges sacred fire these are all working with nature in a disciplined way so whatever calls you to create a ceremony in your life to honor the nature around you to honor the plants you work with or consume maybe to have a fire that you pray with that you give some tobacco offerings to that you ask your ancestors to come to your sacred fire and create that sacred fire in a sacred space where you can pray um, and spend a solid few hours praying deeply praying um, is in itself its own disciplined spiritual practice whether you have the access to create a fire pit and create a sacred fire for yourself 
or if you want to simply pray with a candle to sit for a few hours and truly send your intentions and prayers can transform the nature of the vibration of every cell in your body so to consider that whether it's daily or um, every now and then or with the new moons and the full moons as sort of a ceremony and a ritual whether you use a candle whether you create a sacred fire whether your life ends up aligning for you to go to a sweat lodge or go to a plant medicine ceremony or go to a, a different kind of ceremony make sure that you're working with what resonates with your heart and you're being committed to your disciplined spiritual practice so some other things that um, you can do with discipline are a daily mantra singing picking a mantra even if it's om singing it for 108 times every day and this purifies the mind and also cleanses the water in our bodies you can do a yoga challenge for yourself maybe 30 days of yoga maybe 40 days of yoga of a one hour class every single day whether you do it online or you still have access to a studio in your world right now um, <clears throat> to do a yoga challenge can help you to break other habits and I, we, I will be doing another video on yoga challenges and um, committing to kundalini kriyas as well a separate one and then also going back to breath work and daily meditation you can make your breath work and daily meditation very as well disciplined if you choose something like doing a 40-day challenge or choose something like doing a daily one-hour meditation that you commit yourself to the full hour or doing 11 minutes of say breath of fire or 11 minutes a day of slow deep breathing that you make that a practice for every day and you commit yourself to it these are sort of softer but still disciplined spiritual practices that when you the main focus i'm attempting to offer here is that you choose something you can commit to and you can stick to and you can create a, a healing ritual around that um, you feel brings you lightness but also keeps you on track so that's what a lot of these practices such as ceremonies plant medicine work and sweat lodges and sound healing have all been developed for in the past is to actually keep the people focused on the work that's going on that is taking place in the now to be present with the nature of the work to be present with the nature of the body with the nature of the self and to stay in commitment to that devotion at that at that moment in time and through that commitment to that devotion one receives gifts back from the great spirit um yeah okay and <laughs> number five is two things again it's uh, multiple things per category this is on intermittent fasting and also cleansing with teas or even to water cleansing so intermittent fasting is basically um, a sort of a, a function of my life now and it the main benefit I've noticed from it is that and I recommend that you research intermittent fasting properly if you want to participate or create it in your life. Um, that the main benefit I've noticed is that my metabolism has sped up and seems to maintain a better, a better efficiency uh, along with intermittent fasting, which is essentially you stop eating at a certain time of, of night and then you don't eat until quite a bit later in the day than you would if you are somebody who wakes up and has breakfast right away you would say skip breakfast skip lunch and then only eat between two and seven or two and eight and then don't eat anything after eight and you can make that as part of your day there's other ways to break it up for people depending on how your life flow is so maybe you really you really really need your breakfast in the morning so maybe you stop eating um, in the night a little earlier you eat your breakfast in the morning but then you don't eat until your dinner and you have one meal for dinner and you make it a little bit earlier so that there's that other break and uh, this changes and resets your metabolism and also helps to balance the nervous system and give again is something that can give you more 
time in your day for pro for being productive and or being creative um <clears throat> and then I usually work with this pairing it with herbal teas and um I still drink coffee though a lot of people say you shouldn't when you're intermittent fasting I think I'm starting to see that <laughs> the why of that noticing that my digestion is a bit funny um lately so I'm also sharing all of this to inspire myself like I said before so we'll see where <clears throat> where I go with my cleansing coming up here and I'll share whatever my journey ends up being after sharing all this information with everybody and yeah looking at cleansing with herbs or cleansing with herbal teas is something that everybody and anybody can also do because it doesn't necessarily have to be anything specific but if it is something specific you're feeling in your digestion you can look up an herb that helps with that or you're feeling emotionally or you're feeling um, mentally you can look up an herb that helps with that specific symptom and just and start integrating it into your into your day and starting your day and your morning with lemon water and just your herbal tea for the first few hours of your day maybe you do some meditation maybe you do some yoga and then when you're when you're absolutely like you need to eat now then you start to bring in whatever your food is going to be um and also even just adding cleansing herbs to your life such as turmeric or dandelion uh turmeric is a is a super anti-inflammatory and dandelion helps to flush toxins out of the body and cleans the kidneys and the liver or things at this time of year like um, spices like in a chai are helpful for the respiratory system um, peppermint tea is good for cleansing the digestion so looking at you can even just add a tea to your morning and a tea to your night that and still do the same thing you're doing and just get those herbs in your body helping to balance whatever you're experiencing and then maybe you start to think about doing some intermittent fasting then maybe you start to make all of these other big shifts that we've talked about throughout this um whatever this is workshop or something uh video sharing thing and yeah that's actually everything that i wrote down so far and realize that there's a lot more I could talk about, but this has been a long video. So um, some of these could definitely be given each their own video for more sharing. But feel free to ask any questions in the comments that you have about anything I've talked about. And I can answer them in the comments and or address them in another video. And please be discerning. I'm not sharing anything in this group or in this video telling you what to do or telling you to believe what I'm saying or do what I'm telling you to do uh, or take these suggestions as necessities or or as the only ways to cleanse or as the only ways to grow your spirituality. Uh, this is all for you to open doors, for you to do your own research, for you to find out what matters to you in your body, in your mind, in your spirit and to find different ways to access healing um, along with some just assistive little allies like meditation, breathwork, mantra, kundalini yoga that can all help you when you want to make shifts from addictions or habits um, or lifestyle shifts with the way that you live and consume. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of you who have tuned in and tuned out and for everybody who watches this later. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time to listen to all of this information. I hope it's been helpful for you and you enjoy it. And uh, those of you that didn't have time to watch this live, I hope you return to it and have time to go through it. And for those of you who have watched it live if you feel like you want to listen back it is obviously going to be saved and again feel free to ask questions if you're not clear on anything i've mentioned and i'm just going to finish with one song
everybody namaste satnam mahomatakwasi no siam machikasiam have a beautiful day evening morning blessed be